Hello guys, um, it's Pixie Fruit. How are you doing? I hope everything's going well. Please ignore how zoomed in I am right now. Um, I could zoom out this far and say hello. But I'm going to be applying some makeup today. So we're going to zoom in. Um, and then... Also, while we're zoomed in, we're going to be doing our makeup, of course, and then we're going to be also reading along from the book Glamour Magic, The Witchcraft Revolution to Get What You Want by Deborah Castellano, uh, Castellano, Castellano, she's from New Jersey, she's Italian, I'm assuming, sorry, Sebastian, not right now. Uh, with a name like that, Miss Castellano, I'm assuming that she's Italian at least. I think that's a fair assessment, right? Um, in this video, we're just going to be reading over a few things. So the contents of this book, it looks like um, there's only a few chapters from what I can see. Um... Yeah, it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten chapters, maybe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read along with you guys and discuss it with my opinions and my thoughts. And um, we're going to do some makeup. Now, um, I'm not going to do this whole book in this one video. I think that what we're going to do is we're probably going to read one chapter. And then while we're doing our makeup, of course. Um, it says, do you dare? Your heart's desire always comes at a cost. If it were so easily obtained, you would not want it so badly. There's always the dark of a dreamlike woods. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's always the dark of the dreamlike woods. You must force yourself to walk. Here the wicked things hide and gr your great... What? Here, the wicked things hide and your great and small battles reside. Bits of you must be taken by your goddesses and spirits. Friends will become enemies and then friends again. You'll see unexpected mercy shown from harsh rivals, hollow victories, and cordial defeats. Lost causes will be won. Sure bets will be lost. High roads and low roads must be walked. You must be willing to have face down in the mud with everything that ever mattered to you snatched up by the impassive morai and then equally ready to seize opportunity when they have ex inexplicably begun to favor you again. You must be cunning. You must be sly. You must be willing to employ tactics that aren't considered far like glamour aren't considered fair like glamour i'm sorry i'm a little dyslexic guys i promise i can read and i did go to school mm, i don't know if that's a shadow here let's see if we can get some even lighting on this side of my face <sighs> whatever that'll do okay also i kind of want to bring this down a little bit Let's see <gasps> perfect my face is perfectly in frame now okay <laughs> hi ladies and men and they and thems and all the in-between my ladies my gays and my queer people what is glamour well the word glamour has two definitions let's think about it for a second what makes you exciting and interesting to others? An illusionary spell. So let's think about that for a second. Let's digest it while I'm putting on this. So glamour is something that we were taught as kids. And we didn't even know it. Um, 
especially young women were taught this. They would see their moms put on, and there's a reason why I'm putting red lipstick on my eye. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. They would see their moms put on red lipstick. And they would think, at least me, I'm speaking from my experience, by the way. They would see their, we would see our moms put on red lipstick and we would think, that is empowering, right? I don't know about y'all. That's what I thought. I would see my mom put on her lipstick and I would be like, that is so empowering because you can see the way the body language changes as we put on makeup. And that's just a small example of glamour magic, of course. Okay. It's not just makeup. It's everything that involves that. It's bodying this complete persona that is just, per what is the word? It is conveying a certain manifestation that you, you're requiring to happen. I don't know if that makes sense. Glamour is like this magnificent entity, okay? It's not just a feeling, but it's also something that you do. It's a goal. It's, it's an adjective. It's a noun. I don't know. I don't know. But anyways, let me go ahead and continue with this. The second definition is useless to us, an illusionary spell. That was the second definition. It encourages dismissal from the actual community of witches because it's easy to keep swept up in the Hollywood special effects of all of this magic, right? When we talk about magic, the first thing we think of is fucking like Hocus Pocus and Halloween. That's what we think about. Tell me I'm wrong. When you first heard of magic, which it's becoming a really popular thing. We know this. Witchcraft is becoming this huge thing and it's just trajectorying into this like, it's like the new fucking age, okay? And we know this, but it's just like everyone's doing it. When I was in high school and I was studying Wicca and I was wearing fucking, we're not going to talk about the band t-shirt because the band's a piece of shit. And I found out that one of the lead singers was a pedophile, a pedo, but so I'm not going to reference the band's name, but when I was in high school wearing band t-shirts and I was emo and I was studying Wicca and I was very into witchcraft and dark, dark things Everyone looked at me like I was insane. And now it's like the new rhetoric. Everyone's doing it. No one's Christian anymore. Everyone's becoming a witch. And I don't see it as a bad thing. I'm just saying that when it becomes so oversaturated like that, it is annoying. I don't hate it. I'm glad it's happening, but it's annoying. ADHD. Off track. Sorry. Um, let's see. The second definition is useless to us. It encourages dismissal from the actual community of witches because it's easy to get swept up in the Hollywood special effects aspect of it all, of it all. Magic does not work like that. Our elder, our elders scroll, scold us. Magic does not work like that. No. <laughs> that is a wasteful use of it anyways, okay? Even if it could work like that, it is quickly dismissed as a bad sleight of hand trick. You could change the color of your eyes a lot faster with contacts than concentrating large swaths of magical practice dedicated to it. And so glamour is dismissed as not terribly realistic party trick. Instead, an earth shattering subtle magic that utilizes what makes you exciting and interesting to others. Hello. It's no coincidence that glamour is also associated with female beauty, especially if this beauty dares to be tarted up by cosmetics or clothing. We have been taught that women who try too hard were never actually pretty. It was just their deceptive lipstick, their spanks full of lies, their deceitful glittering mono... I don't even know how to say that, child. The lesson has been that if anyone dares to attempt to own their power, not with sheer dominance, but by embracing all that it is in them that is fascinating and charming to others, 
if they dared to try and make themselves into something that they wanted and actually reached for their heart's desire, especially by using magic, their appearance, <laughs> their appearance, cunning or bravery, they must be smacked down and shamed. Society relentlessly tells us that a real person of substance would never become involved in actually using glamour. Baby, I'm fat. And I use glamour magic all the time. So when they say a real person would not, what does it say? A real person of substance would never become involved in actually using glamour. Okay, I'm, I'm smart. I like to think. There are plenty of beautifully intelligent people out there that use glamour magic. And it's kind of like a diss. Like it's kind of like a side eye, like, uh, to say that. Don't you think? Let me put this on before this dries down and I can't maneuver it at all. And then we'll move on to this next section. So, I don't support this company anymore, by the way, guys. I'm using it for a mirror. I don't have a handheld mirror. If someone would like to send me a handheld mirror, I would gladly take it. But until then, I'm going to be using this. <laughs> so, anyways... That's kind of a bad, like the most backhanded compliment. Someone of substance could never be so frivolous to get caught up with something like glamour magic. Or, I mean, but that's like what everyone has said for the longest time. Like that meme that was popular like six years ago on Facebook with the bimbo who was walking. She was big tittied. She had blonde hair, stripper heels on, and she was walking and then she picks up a book. And then as she continues walking after reading the book, she becomes more dull. Excuse me. <laughs> you can be smart and have big brains and be intelligent. And you can still be a bimbo. I like to say I'm a himbo. Himbo vibes, you know. But anyways. Why can't you be both? Well, we're going to get into that. So this is a really old lipstick. I'm only using it because it's the perfect shade of like purple to make my green eyes pop. Hello. Do you see that? So anyways. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Why is it that people think that when you become in intel intelligent, Or not that you become intelligent, but because you're intelligent, you're not allowed to be a bimbo. Bimbos get what they want, girl. I'd love to be a bimbo, hence why I call myself a himbo. I want to be a himbo. I want to be someone who goes throughout life and everyone just thinks so small of me and then I can just go whoop and I can prove you wrong, baby. But yeah, no. Don't get it twisted. I have many personalities, baby. Many. Anyways. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's continue. Society relentlessly tells us that a real person of substance would never become involved in actually using glamour of any kind to improve their lot in life. That sort of behavior is reserved for strippers, social climbers, those without means, drag kings and queens. People of dubious gender and sexual identity, drifters, grifters, and you know, yes, you. Her bitch. I fit almost half of those categories. <laughs> but. I have no idea what I'm doing with my face today, by the way. I'm just putting on makeup to put it on. We're going to trust the end result, okay? It's going to look messy until I'm done. Don't judge me just because it looks bad right now. It's going to get there. All right, next section. Are you a good witch or are you a bad witch? 
witch, occultist, mage, whatever word you have pressed into your own forehead and sealed with blood, spit, or myrrh oil, we are other. We have more in common with spies, assassins, pirates, highwaymen, than with general modern populace. We may not live at the edge of a thick forest glen where we have given sacred offerings for our services anymore, but times have changed and so do we. Glamour isn't a magic of landscapes that never really existed. It's everything interesting and exciting about you that you have already resided inside of you. I'm sorry. I'm getting excited, guys, and I'm just reading it so fast. And I know I sound ignorant. I promise I'm not. It's everything interesting and exciting about you that you already have residing inside of you. If it's already there, lying dormant and sleeping in the bottom of your brain pan and the slope of your stomach and the crook of your nethers... What can't you accomplish once you know how to use it? We are used to being denied as an other... I'm sorry. We are used to being denied as other... Okay, maybe it's not me. Maybe it's like the book itself that's giving me problems reading it because it just doesn't make sense until I read it like four times for some reason. We have become accustomed to accepting less and apologizing for everything we are that is not easily accepted. Yes, even now, even today, even with everything going on, there are still people out here apologizing for being themselves, including me. There are days where I walk around and I apologize for everything, but then I remember, I'm a bad bitch. Fuck the bitch. Bitch gets slick. Okay. We apologetically ask our goddesses, spirits, and ancestors for only what we feel like we actually deserve, and then just a little less to be sure. We must never be seen by anyone ever as someone who overreached, as someone who grasps, as someone who is acquisitive, not by our families, not by our friends, not by our communities, not even by the universe herself. Think of fairy tales, think of reality television shows, think of operas. Who's the cautionary tale? It's the bad girl. The one who took more than she should have, the one who asked for retribution, retribution, the one who forgot her place, the one who didn't need to be liked by others if she could further her cause. Regina George. And I know a lot of you hate on him right now, but Jeffree Star, Glamour Magic. He's a Scorpio. He knows what he's doing. He's been doing it for years. And now he is getting in that mindset, I get, I'm assuming. I don't know him personally, but it's like getting in that mindset of growth and like wanting to ascend past glamour magic and actually... I can't wait to live in the country. Part of me loves living in the city, but the other part of me is so excited to go back to the country. So anyways, it's like he's stuck in this growth aspect. Like he has to let that go. You can continue with both. Don't get me wrong. I don't like Jeffree Star, but what I'm trying to say is that you can love the dark side of yourself just as much as you love the light side. It's all about balance, right? She is the one who must be destroyed. She is the one who must cry at the bottom of a well for her misdeeds. She is the one who must be thrown down at all costs, no matter what your gender. You may identify with the bad girl archetype. If you have ever been made to feel like less than, if you have ever been scapegoated or betrayed simply for standing up for yourself, when it wasn't convenient for others, if you sh you've never solved... If I, if I could just read, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. If I could just read. 
we can continue. For standing up for yourself, even when it wasn't convenient for others, underline pin. Remember that. If you've ever solved a problem with a strategy others wouldn't dare to use, nice girls are the ones who are awarded. They must be patient, obedient, and kind, not for the sake of any of these virtues themselves, but so they will be rescued and rewarded. So we force ourselves to be nice girls because we shiver at the consequences we've seen through cultural narratives and in the satisfaction we've seen others take when a real life bad girl is dethroned. No matter how much this role chafes us, we will grit our teeth because this is how our narrative will move forward. It is the only way to ask for something politely and just a little bit less than what we want. So glamour magic, think about it like this. Have you ever seen a deer in the headlights? Sometimes that deer in the headlights gets run over, but sometimes she stops traffic and all of traffic staring at her. So are you going to stop traffic or are you going to get run over? At the end of the day, it's your choice. Not the cars. You chose to run out in front of the bitches. You either be prepared or you don't. And if you don't like me, if you're not, if you're watching this video and you're like, what the fuck? I got one thing for you. One thing. Be yourself, bitch. Step your pussy up, honey. Get a job. Own a business, bitch. Suck a dick. We love T.S. Madison in this house. Okay. Anyways, I'm going to stop talking so much shit. And I'm going to get back to reading, but I just wanted to hurry up and finish this. And I'm trying to be entertaining while doing my makeup. This is not as easy as it looks, children. We're already 30 minutes in and I've barely finished my eyeshadow. In reality, I've barely made a dent in this eyeshadow, okay? See how I just keep building it. I'm real patient. I take my time. That's how your life should be. You should be patient and taking your time. All good things come to people who wait. Y'all ain't never heard that before? Oh, this mirror is so much bigger. Let me use this one. Fuck. Mm -mm. Again, I no longer support this company. I just have a bunch of the products laying around. And it's important to me that I use the products that I pay for. Because, baby, this palette was not cheap. This, I think this palette alone was like 50 something dollars, okay? And it's still within the expiration date. Now let me go put this purple back on her. Damn. That purple's...
Okay. We're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. This is my favorite color scheme. Like the orange down. It's cute. So, back to what I was trying to say. Maybe I should put that on a different brush. Let me... Oh, let me blend this out with this. Period, bitch. That looks so fucking good. Okay. And it's only going to get better, guys. What the hell? I need a cloth to wipe my face. I've got a bunch of, like, you know, fallout. BRB. <laughs> it's just smearing. Doing this right here without makeup wipes. That's how you clear your sinuses. Okay. So while I'm removing makeup, Let's continue. <sighs> it's the only way to receive anything for ourselves without shuddering out about our enemies. If we are righteous, we will be worthy. We wait, we do what we're supposed to do. We keep hoping until we are bitter that our virtue was not rewarded, nor was it enough of a reward in one of itself. Whatever your gender identity, you may find yourself relating to being a good girl if you would rather go along to get along, even if it puts your personal, personal, even if it puts your personal ambition at stake, okay? If you are courteous, even when the time for courtesy has long since passed, or if you follow an intricate set of rules to be well-liked by others, we all have something in common here. As nice girls, being nice didn't make our most illicit wishes manifest. What if it were possible to be bad while still being good? You can be both of those things. You can be bad enough to work to get your aspiration fulfilled using mundane work, glamour, and magic while still being good enough to have a personal code of ethics that keep your head held high. It starts right here, right now, with your great work. It goes on to say, when I refer to your great work, I'm referring to your innermost transmutation, which begins when you are able to pinpoint what you want. Yes, want. The real heart of the dark in your everyday life fairy story, witchcraft is meant to be used for those who want something as much as a fairy tale's heroine or villain. If you didn't have a blaze of unfulfilled need within you, why would you go on a journey that will have unknown and terrifying consequences? You won't be able to map out every step of this path. You won't know what will be asked of you to feed the fire. And you don't know if you will succeed. What will it bring to your life? What will it take away? No sensible person would travel down murky, unknown corridors unless they wanted something fiercely in the dark of their heart. Before we make our first step on this journey, however, we require a syllabus. A ritual can be as simple as an elaborate or as elaborate as you make it. You are a captain of your own ship. You can decide for yourself what works best for yourself in esoteric experiments you'll find throughout this book. That being said, I encourage you to step outside of your most comfortable witchcraft habits and investigate practicing in different ways. Comfort often does not guarantee success. For example, I personally have a reality TV television habit I have recently broken. It's comfortable and makes me feel invested, but prevents me from using my time to practice witchcraft, read, write, practice yoga, actively engage with others, or watch plot-driven television. So I must, mostly at least, break this deliciously comfortable habit if I want to see the real change in other aspects of my life. Period. Period. What are you willing to sacrifice to get what you want? At the end of the day, that's what matters. If you generally cast a circle, don't. Use another method of protection. If you usually refrain from asking your goddesses and spirits for small favors, ask and see what happens. If you are usually carefully choreographed, see how your work works when you're more improv 
improvising. Improvational. Improvisational. You know what I mean. Okay. I, I, <laughs> you know what I mean. Keep notes as to what you've done differently and see what works. Usually uh, your results will show where you altered your work and how it worked for you. It's very difficult to change habits that bring us comfort, but witchcraft was never designed to make us safe or comfortable. Witchcraft was created to shake up the world, both externally and internally. It's a primal scream that demands to be heard. The rituals or esoteric experiments in this book are meant to be complete. You know what? Pause. Pause. I was talking to myself in the monitor. The rites or esoteric experiments in this book are meant to be accomplished in the order they are presented. Each experiment's design is meant to spark your own creativity. They are not meant to be used as an exact format, but as a compass to point you in the right direction and finding the intended objective. However, you choose to find that objective is up to you. However you choose. Yeah. I Listen, my ADHD is just going hard with me today. The important aspect is finding it. You can disrespect... <laughs> you can... <laughs> you can disregard all of my suggestions suggestions and the esoteric experiments or follow them as closely as you wish it's up to you if you choose to go out of order or choose to skip any there will not be generational curses laid on your head spirits will not haunt you in your sleep nor any of those exciting things <laughs> that said if you would like to actually manifest your glamour and leverage it into accomplishing your great work it would behoove you to carefully and thoughtfully do each ritual in the order it's presented. Much like your DNA, fingerprints, and personality, no one's great works are going to be exactly alike. Your great work needs to be something that takes effort for you to accomplish, okay? I hear that. It should be something that is deeply meaningful to you, and it should be something that needs both practical and magical work to complete. Potential great works can be anything from having a regular spiritual practice to finding a mate to marry to discovering your career path to accomplishing a specific creative endeavor to buying a house. The first esoteric experiment will help you discover what your great work is and throughout the book you will be given opportunities to use your glamour magic to give you more opportunities to obtain your great work. I'm loving this book so far, girls. I went back in for makeup. And I need to remove this first. It's all over my face. Oh my gosh. Why? I, I know it's hard for you guys to see, but it's literally, this napkin is just covered. Oh my gosh. It's awful. So, if you're following along still, then you know that this book is not meant to be used as some sort, sort of Bible or some form of a spell book. It's more so just a direction or a guide for you, um, a compass, which we went over a second ago by reading. But I want to elaborate on that. If you are someone who doesn't practice magic frequently and you're not that familiar with it, it's important that you know that this is not something that's going to create chaos in your life. Glamour magic can be done by anybody. That's why I love glamour magic so much because it's not something that you have to study. I mean, it, it's really good if you study. It's not something you necessarily have to study. It's more so a mindset used to create your reality, okay? It's like the law of attraction, right? 
you can manifest what you want by using glamour magic. And it's so easy once you understand it. And it also helps you on your healing journey. Um, if you are into witchcraft, that should be one of the first things that you're doing is healing, right? Working on healing, which it's never complete. That's something I want. When I first started getting into witchcraft, I was so stuck on the idea that I couldn't start practicing and actually putting myself out there in the witchcraft community until I was done healing. And recently I've come to the conclusion that if I wait until I'm healed to do that, I'll never reach that goal. I'll never do it because healing's a lifelong journey. It's called the path for a reason, as my godmother would say. I love you, by the way, if you're watching this, mama. But it's called the path for a reason, so it never ends. So the fact that it took me this long to understand that if I keep putting it off in fear because I want to be healed first, then I'm never going to reach my goal ever. So why not just do it? Let's just go with it, you know? So anyways, please, I'm sorry, please do not use paper towels if you're going to be doing this. Um, I'm using them because I haven't done makeup in a while, so I don't have makeup wipes. But it's highly encouraged that you use makeup wipes. For good reasoning. Because this shit right here will dry your skin out. I'm going to put some moisturizer on my beard. And get it all good and tame. Look at how red it is right here now because I use paper towels. Ridiculous. And I don't even have foundation. That's how long it's been since I've done makeup, y'all. I, when I say I've been on this healing journey, I mean it. I used to do makeup all the time. I haven't done makeup in forever. Forever. Okay. Is that too orange for me? I'm trying to add a little bit of color back to my face, but I feel like that's too orange. I look muddy now. No, ma'am. That's not cute. It'll be okay. We'll continue with the video. Discover your first great work. Pack your bag with things you may need and can carry a leather, a leather, a leather journal gifted to you that you've never used in a good pen. A curated playlist for your phone, a vintage blanket, a travel carafe filled with canva, canva tea, a scone you baked while carefully with carefully chosen herbs, battered tarot cards, well-worn mela beads, a compass that belonged to your grandmother, drawing pencils and a heavy paper, a scent that evokes a particular memory, sturdy books, a well-worn sweater, a small packet of salt, a second small packet of unadulterated adulterated tobacco, a protective amulet, pomegranate seeds, a lipstick as red as a rose, a compact mirror etched with clandestine signals, a sacred text, an enchanted salve, go into the woods, no, not there, not your forest with the tree that cradles you within its limbs in the back blackbirds that sing back to you. It must be an unfamiliar grove that has no memory of you. Follow the trails laid out for you by helpful strangers until you are deeply immersed in the foreign corpse. Foreign copes. Walk until you find trees that croon to you. Walk until you find a place that fills a part of your kismet. Step off the trail while being mindful of how to get back to it. Amble until you find a place that is 
comfortable. Place your blanket down. First, offer your tobacco to the forest. Now, this is important, okay? As someone that practices, offerings are important. First, offer your tobacco to the forest. Say words that are simple and natural to you. Give thanks. Lay your offering down at the base of a tree. Demarcate your working space and create a protection for yourself by arra arranging a ring of salt around your blanket. Uh -huh. I mean, I wouldn't recommend doing salt just because if you're going to be doing work, it's not really ideal to use salt in work. Let me finish this. Say words that are simple and natural to you. Lay your offering down at the base of a tree, you know, do the salt circle. Turn a piece of your clothing inside out. Arrange the objects from your carrier on your blanket until you are satisfied. Set your intention. Word your desire to find your great work carefully and concisely. Employ your chosen objects to assist you. Rewrite, free write, draw, alter your headspace, okay? Trance out to your playlist. Draw cards until a path is clear. Eat pomegranate seeds until your spirit manifests. Mantra, so... Um, I am that. Look for signs and omens in the birds, the trees, the squirrels, the deer. Stay until you have a concise, one-sentence great work. Remain there. Past the boredom, past the frustration, past the anger, past the existential angst, past the chattering in your brain, persist until you have your answer. This is your quest. This is the beginning of your journey. Write down your heart's desire in one sentence. The thrill of fear that runs through you after writing it down so boldly is real. But if you are careful, if you are cunning, if you use the sorcery that pulses within you, you may just live to tell the tale. If it doesn't burn you alive like a powdery white moth first, of course, don't say it, I didn't warn you. Glamour isn't just a flame, it's a bonfire. Now that you know what you want, how will you get it? How will you get it? So this was just an introduction to glamour magic. Um, I'm not going to continue on this video right now. We're going to come back to this. The video is already an hour long. But I will be doing another video very soon. And we will follow along with where we're at. I will pin it right here. And um, yeah. So in the next video, we're going to go over how do you get what you want? How do you get what you want? So your first, your first step in this process is to figure out what you want. And then once you figure it out, we will go through it together and we will achieve it. So I will put the first experiment or ritual in the description word for word so that you can follow it yourself. And um, I want you guys to comment and tell me what you found out. What did you write down that you want to be? What is it that you want in life? What did you find? I'm actually really excited to do this. I think I have an idea of what I want to write, but after doing what it says and meditating and actually finding my inner self a little bit, it might change. Who knows? That's, the, that's what's so fun about this. So, like I said, um, like I said, I will... Put that in the description box below. Let me zoom out a little bit for you guys. Hi, we're back to full picture. Okay, I will put that in the description box below for you guys. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments how it worked for you. And then next week we will come back and do this again. But we'll be talking about I will be talking about my experience and then also we'll be moving on to number two, which is how are we going to achieve what we want, basically. I hope you guys have a magnificent 
day. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. Today is Friday. Um, it is the day of self-love. But um, I think that's everything I want to say. I love you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. And um, I'll go ahead and link all of my socials below. But just so you know, I do have a Discord and a Twitch where I play video games. Um, you can come chat to me live when I'm on Twitch doing games um, and other things like that. So make sure you check out my socials below. Leave a like and a comment. And uh, I love you. Bye, guys.